So now it's time for us to verify the requirements in order to conduct this test, which is the same thing as verifying the conditions. Now the first thing we want to know is whether it was random, and it does say right here that it was a random sample of 13 patients. To be honest with you, however, <laughs> even if it doesn't say it, it's usually safe to assume in our problems just because of the way our course is developed. If we don't have random, we have bias, and if you have bias, you have big, big problems that we're not going to solve in a stats one course. All right, then after we have random, we need a dependent sample, but we already explained that back in letter A. We'll just say it again. So the dependent sample was because it was one group measured before and after. And before and after is classic dependent sample stuff. All right, next we need that the sample is independent of the population. So even though it's a dependent sample of patients before and after, we need those 13 patients to be independent of the population. I'm not going to write all of this. Okay, so n is 13 is less than 0.05 of capital N. Well, here, let me write it this way. Less than or equal to. So 13 is less than 0.05. And then, of course, we have to say what capital N is, which in this case would be all chronic pain sufferers. And that is definitely the case. There is a lot of people that have chronic pain. So sufferers. Sorry, my R got lost in there. <laughs> so that's definitely the case. No problem, right? So this is, of course. And, of course, this was yes as well. So we have yes here, yes here. Of course, here, yes, of course. And then last but not least, we need normal, which is right here. Because these dots are following this line more or less, um, and on this particular graph, this is built with a different program called Minitab, and you like those boundaries. If all the points are kind of between the boundaries, then that's good enough. So this would be yes, because the points in um, this graph, well, here I'll say points in the graph are linear. Remember that's called a normal probability plot. We learned it in section uh, 7.3. I'm going to put ish. They're, they're linear-ish. <laughs> they're, they're close to linear, right? They don't have to be perfectly linear. They basically have to be close to the linear line, which they are. And that's good enough for us. All right, so we have our four conditions met. So now it's time to do the test. All right, so we already know the null and alternative hypotheses because we figured them out. We said that the mu d is equal to zero, which is not exactly hard because that's your only option for a null hypothesis in this section. So it's always gonna be that it's equal to zero. The alternative, however, is tricky. We wanted it to reduce pain, which you would normally think is a less than, but reduction in this case was a greater than. And again, you can write out why, but we saw it in um, letter B on the previous page. Or was it, sorry, letter D on the previous page. Now, alpha is our level of significance. It's the probability of a type 1 false positive error. So that would be 0.05. That's the easy part. Now, step three. We're actually going to have to do this whole formula with the substitution and everything. So T0 is D bar divided by SD over the square root of N. D bar, however, we found on the previous page. It was 1.923, and it was divided by the standard deviation, which was 1.605. See, it's right here, 1.605, divided by the square root of 13. Now, as much as you would love to just type that into a calculator, feel free, <laughs> but we don't need to. We can actually do this a different way. So you can notice it says right here on this page that the t-test, which is on the calculator, um, you can run this, but you want to do it on the differences, on the d's, right? So run that t-test on the differences. On StatCrunch, you're going to use, well, let's see, stat, well, let's, let's look at it real quick. Let's do StatCrunch first, actually, so we can see it. It's a little bit different than before. So I'm going to close this. All right, so stat, if I go to T stat, do you see the third option there? See how it says paired? So let's click on that. And it's saying, okay, where's sample one? Well, group one was before, group two is after. Nice, huh? 
And if you want to save the differences, which we already found before, but if you want to save them, you can click on the little save differences and it will do it again. We actually didn't have to do the calculation we did before because when we run this test, it'll actually save those differences for us if we so desire. Now it's always zero for us, so we'll leave that zero, and then we want to switch this to a greater than. And then if you would like to have, you know, a graph or anything, if you want summary statistics, we could click that. Let's just leave that. And I'm going to click compute. You know what, I'm also going to click on the pot, box plot just for fun. Okay, so I'm going to click compute. And there we have it. So you've got your test statistic right there. Isn't that nice? And notice it found the differences. Look, that new column of differences, that was just figured out automatically by StatCrunch. You don't even have to do the thing we did before with the data and the compute. You don't have to do that. If you run the test, you can actually have it find the differences for you. There's your mean right there. There's your um, standard error. It doesn't find the standard deviation that way. So we did still need to run those calculations on the standard deviation to find the standard deviation, but that's okay. So we can see right here the test statistic is 4.319 and the p-value is 0 0.0005. Interesting. And if you want, you can click on this little graph and you can see the before minus after for a box plot. That's kind of fun. All right, but what we really care about is that value right there. So 4.319, that is our test statistic. Now if I grab the calculator instead, let me grab that, I would go to stat, tests, t-test number two, but you have to run it on the differences. So click data, but your data is in L3. So your mu zero, that's your null hypothesis. That was zero, right? It says right here, mu d equals zero right there. So it's zero and your data is in L3. So second three, and you want to choose the greater than option. And you go down to calculate and you press enter. And there you can see 4.319 and there's the p-value 4.9 and then see the e negative 4. So that would round to 0 0.0005 just like StatCrunch gives us. On a side note, let's suppose you actually do the null hypothesis and the, excuse me, the alternative hypothesis incorrectly. You see reduction and you think that means less than. I'm going to show you what happens. So if you go down to calculate, do you see how large the p-value is? See how it's 0.9995? That is a giant red flag that you went the wrong way, that you have to switch your sign. So if you get a p-value wrong, if you get an, null, an alternative hypothesis wrong, you can fix it real easy because you'll see your p-value is too large. You go back and rerun the test and make it so that your sign goes the other way. So if it's a one-tailed test, that is a very common occurrence in chapter 11. It happens all the time. So if you end up with a p-value that's honestly anything that's that's super large anything bigger than 0 0.5 so 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 anything that big go the other direction switch your sign and go the other way all right so we have that so now we can actually write this down so we know that this is 4.319 we got it from um from the technology i'll just write that from tech let's go back real quick how we did this we went to tat stat t stat and then we picked paired because of course these are paired data. So we chose the paired option. So on StatCrunch, if, if that's what you wanted to use. So if you want to use the calculator, it's a t-test, but on the differences. And then on StatCrunch, that's what we went to. Nice. All right, so step four, let's make a normal curve. Actually, it's a t-curve. It looks like a normal curve, but it's not. It's a T-curve with degrees of freedom 12, if you want to know. 4.319, however, is way over here. So this is my T0, which is 4.319. And so that P-value right there is 0 0.0005. Lovely. All right, and remember, I'm choosing that because we did a right-tailed test. So I'm choosing this picture, but this T0 is way too far to the left. We have a very tiny tail, so we need to be 4.3 standard deviations over. So that's quite a bit. Actually, standard errors over, to be perfectly honest, because that's the standard error up there. All right, so then step five, we are going to reject H0. 
because that still is the same thing it was it was in chapter 10. You reject H0 when your p-value, which in this case is 0 0.0005, is less than your alpha, which was 0 0.05. So we reject because that p-value is very low. Therefore, just as we thought from the box plots, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that um, there is a there is a mean reduction in pain level after the Reiki therapy. And there we have it. And of course that reduction, that's H1, right? And usually if you read in the problem somewhere, there's some place that's stating it out. It's right here, mean reduction in pain level, right? And it was actually written on the previous page as well. So if you hunt around, you should be able to find a phrase that'll fit pretty well for stating the alternative hypotheses in terms of words. Now, if you're thinking, hey, this looked really familiar. Yes, this is extremely similar to what we did in 10.3. The difference, no pun intended, is that we're using it on the differences. So it's on these Ds here. So you have to find that third column or that third, um, well, actually it was the third column for both StatCrunch and the calculator. You have to find that third column and run the test on that which of course StatCrunch will actually find the column for you when you run the t-stat. The only thing is that it doesn't find the standard deviation. That way you'll have to find standard deviation to fill out the formula with the stat summary stat columns piece. But you can do pretty much everything else with stat t-stat paired, choosing the paired option. And that's a little bit um, easier and different than in the calculator. The calculator, you have to go find the column itself and then run the regular t-test on that column. So you have to find those differences and then run the t-test on those differences in L3. So that has to be your list. Remember that for all of section 11.2, the mu zero is always zero. The null hypothesis is always assuming that there's no change, that there's no difference. And I particularly like how StatCrunch actually writes it out like that. Mu D mu d. It actually is reminding us that it's about those differences. And it told us it was doing before and after the difference between group one, which was before and group one or group two, which is after, which is very nice.